All right, got here a little Furman generator from Costco. Uh, let's see what we have here. The user's guide looks like. Yeah, quick reference guide. Operator's manual. Uh, give you a little Phillips screwdriver. Rinky dink, but that's alright. Yeah, this thing's this thing costs less than um, less than two hundred bucks delivered, so can't try too much. Couple of bolts and uh, some kind of cap, plug cap. Uh, let's see, that looks like a spark plug wrench and the handle the top of the generator. Generator. So I think this thing weighs like 80 pounds or something like that. Well, actually, that's what that's for. So this is for right here. Handle right here. The uh, screwdriver and the uh, screws. So let's see, it even has some. Washers down here. I'm guessing these little rubber washers are down here. Yep, that's right. Rubber washers on the bottom. Both go right through. Up like so. Yeah, that's it. Again, the little rubber washer. And the screw, so the rubber washer right here is uh, on the bottom of the handle. Screw goes on top of that. So the hard part here is to put this on without the rubber washer on and off. Hard to torque this down because the screwdriver is so small, the, the handle here is so small that you don't have any leverage. And the screw head here is actually, this is a number two Phillips. The screw head is actually a number three Phillips. So they didn't even give you the right size Phillips screwdriver to fit it properly. Two plugs, like so. Okay, so lift this up. Oh, oh yeah, that's heavy. Bottle of oil looks like Ken W thirty Ken W thirty oil. This is not even a. This is only twelve point nine ounces, thirty eight milliliters. Nothing in here. Uh, the funnel. Little jumper cables. 
for the blood there, unless you ask for. Uh, let's see. What's on here? So here's the oil fill and the oil drain. Let's bring this tripod down a little bit. Okay, so this thing is uh, basically a thousand watts. Uh, max is thirteen hundred. I think this is the running watts is a thousand watts. This thing is eighty cc, so it's kind of big. Motor is kind of big, engine is kind of big for the output, but you know it is very small and compact. And again, it's you know it's less than two hundred bucks shipped to my house. So it's so okay. Let's see, one point three gallons or four point nine liters, up to nine hours. See, run time at 50% load. So if you go on 100% load, it's probably only you know half that. So it's probably only five hours, four hours. Uh, let's see what else is about this thing. Because it'll on-off switch for the what is this that for? Mutual floating. Not sure, what that is for this is a circuit breaker. There's your plug. Yes, it's just one plug only. One one. 110 120 uh, volt plug. This is a uh, it says right here 20 amps. So that's pretty strong. One plug. Let's see. There's a little uh, is this a voltmeter? No, it goes 0 to 300. 0 to 300 what volts or oh, V V for volts. Also, oh, it should be somewhere in the middle. No, not the middle. So, the middle is so that's what 100, 200, 300. So, that's 150 in the middle. So it should, should be somewhere between the middle and the 100. All right, let's see. Tells you how to start everything right here too. Check the oil, check the gas, turn it on. That's for the turning on the uh, the gas, which is, let's see. Oh, it's on this side right here. So right now it's off and that's on, on, off. That's the petcock basically. This right here is, I believe the, uh, the uh, idle speed. Well, can trust, I think that controls the idle speed, I believe. Um, let's see. So there's, so it's a pull starter here, right? Pull starter. Let's see on this side. There's another little reset button right here. What is this right here? Oh, this is the oh, this is that other that plug right here. That goofy jumper plug. So this is a. If you look at this plug, it's not a, not a regular plug. It's like a. Right, just like that, so it's like a V-shaped plug. Right here, what is that for? Let's see. DC system, so 12 volts, 8.3 amps. Basically, you could use this to charge your battery on your car if you had like, like a dead battery. Okay, so it has more than one plug. It has a DC plug and a uh, or 12 volt DC and a uh, 120 volt AC. Alright, let's see what else does I have on here. Here's the spark plug right here. So it looks like it's in there. This is the spark arrester. So that's good that it has a spark arrester built in. So if you're like in the you know in the woods or something like that, where there's uh, flammables, you know, like dry leaves and such, this will prevent uh, a fire. So here's your carburetor down right here. There's a carburetor, that's the float bowl right here. So this is the float drain, I believe. Yeah, this is the float drain. Or is it this one? No, I think it's this one. This is something else. This is probably to take off the float bowl. Uh, so this, you need to do this. Uh, if you don't use this, you know, once you use this and you don't use this for a while, you need to open this up here and let it let the float drain out. But before you do that, you have to actually oops, you have to make sure that you turn off the petcock. Otherwise, the gas will keep on flowing out. Um, so this is the head right here, obviously. The head, and actually, this is the actual no, no, this is the intake right here. So, this side is the intake. Let's see what does it say right here run courier or run start. That's uh, oh, this is oh, this right here. Oh, this is the choke. So, that's the choke. And what the hell is this then? Oh, idle speed, yeah, idle speed, idle speed, choke. So, that's uh, so which way is which? So, that way is run, so this way is start. 
Okay. So when you start, you have the choke. So this two screws right here is for the air filter. This is just dumb screws. Let's uh, look it up. Look at it real fast. Hopefully, it's the uh, either a washable air filter or a uh, yeah, this is washable. So it's a sponge foam type air filter. This type is washable. Um, they actually don't. This type of filter doesn't uh, doesn't uh, trap dirt very well. It's better that you. Uh, I'm thinking I might put a, a different filter on here, like a get one of my motorcycle filters in and a foam filter thing, because I have like a blank motorcycle foam filter that I could use, cut this out and make maybe it's it's a tighter weave or tighter mesh so it trap more dirt but also it's a good idea to use some like foam filter oil and you add it on here the foam filter oil will um, will catch the dirt so this this type of filter doesn't catch the small you know very small particles very well it catches big stuff but not small stuff so that's a good idea to do that um, I, actually, I do have some of that stuff somewhere laying around Let's put this back for now, just start it up real quick and, and see how you know, how it goes. But that's that. Um, let's actually fill it up then. Let's fill it up with oil. With oil right here. So here's the oil plug. How do you check the oil on this thing? So that's the oil dip dip stick right here. All right. Your brag. Oil dip stick. And I believe you're supposed to check this with with it leveled and let's see I'm not leveled right here let me see shoot I'm not leveled I'm actually kind of facing downwards sloping downwards I say. so you basically just go like that and, and uh, you don't uh, you don't screw it in you just go like that and out and the oil will be wherever within that hash mark so fill it up with oil I don't know how much it takes Stick this rag down here because I have no idea it's gonna overflow or what. Kind of dusty. Turn that dust out. Funnel. So this is kind of a nice funnel. I like this. I could use this funnel. So it's nice and small, compact. Oh, how tight. So this is 10W30. So being a new, a new, uh, a new engine basically. You always need to, uh, you always need to break in the engine, so you just run it, you just run it for, uh, oops, uh -huh. you just run it for uh, like an hour or so, and that should, uh, that should break it in. Uh, basically, well, actually, the first run I would, I wouldn't run it for an hour. The first run I would actually just run it up to operating temperature. Once it gets set up to operating temperature, let it cool down to ambient temperature. But basically, the next day, then then you run it again, um, and you could probably do that, you know, several times until, you know, probably at least two or three times. Um, then you could. Uh, um, I can't see nothing. Couldn't see nothing. Tell how much oil am I? Oh, jeez. Gotta put the rag down, or in this case, it's old, old, my old underwear. That's what I used for rags. I used old clothes. No reason to uh, just throw away old clothes, right? Best is to use old socks and underwears and t shirts. That way you you know you never have to buy rags. Let's see. Let me put my dipstick in here. Rag, this rag is so dirty. Old towels as well. It's an old towel. I use 
the old towel as a rag, terry cloth towel. So it's actually at the low mark, at the bottom of the hash mark, so it's not even close to being uh, being filled up. And I think I already poured in about half this this uh, this oil. Let's see, put in some more. So now I think I'm about a quarter, a quarter or a third of the oil left. This is pretty thick oil too. It says 10:30, but it seems thicker than that. It's probably because it's just dino, uh, uh, dino juice, or you know, uh, um, fossil uh, fossil oil, not synthetic oil. That's why it seems so. To be kind of thick, even though it's a 10, 10 30. It's uh, it's kind of cold right now. It's probably in the fifties, you know, like maybe upper fifties. All right, so I am. Oh, that's I'm still only like a quarter away. So I'm like, I guess I probably probably put in all of it because I'm only like about a quarter away on my hash mark. Also at the same time, I'm actually just kind of downward sloping a little bit, so so it's gonna read it a little bit high. So just have a little bit left. So okay, it's almost at the full mark. Again, this is downward sloping, so it's actually going to read a little high. I think I'm just going to pour the whole bottle in because there's not much left at all now. Oops, it's over, overflowing. So that tells me it's probably okay. And actually, I still didn't pour in the whole bottle yet. I'm just gonna leave it at that, and that's fine. I'm gonna call it good. Again, because my my I have a little bit of a downward slope. If I didn't have the, down, the downward slope, I think I would I'd be fine. Okay, so that's good. Um. But let me put it aside, otherwise, I'm gonna knock this over and spill oil everywhere. So, I need to pour in gas. This thing uses 1.3 gallons. Oh, jeez. Let's see, it says no on top of the of the uh, cap here. It says uh, no E15, no E85. So, I guess it's okay with E10, but E15 is t still too much. Ethanol, you know, ethanol in in gas sucks. Everyone that that has motorcycles know that. So there's the top. Has a little O-ring there. It was actually it's actually wet too. So that's not gas. It's oil. It smells like oil to me. So let's look at what's in here. Oh, so there's a little filter in here. A little filter. And yeah, that's just it. That's all that's in there. Um, just gonna fill this up with gas and start it up. So let me end it there for now. Uh, uh, I think that's all I need to do as far as prepping this thing. I need to put in gas because everything is done, I believe. Let me double check the the. the uh, let me double check the. Uh, carburetor here make sure it's closed on the bottom so that's that's this this screw down here I'm trying to so you guys can see that so so here's the carburetor right here 
this thing right here down right here that's the float bowl and the screw right here is the uh is the drain plug so whenever you store this when as you finish and you don't use it for a while you need to open up the screw and let gasoline drain out right here but before you do that make sure you turn off the petcock open this up let, let this float bowl drain out then close it back up uh the reason why you do that is because gasoline is a volatile you know it's volatile meaning it uh it evaporates very easily so so it evaporates and it will leave residue in the carburetor and that residue is basically a shellac you know it's like shellac and it and it plugs the the little tiny orifices that's in here and it will clog up and you, and it won't run ne the next time you, you try to use it you're like what the hell's going on this thing's no good blah 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 no that's not it's not this thing's fault it's your fault for not for not uh doing it right all right so so that's closed got oil i just need to get gas so let me make a different video